Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we have a couple of quick announcements and a short promo um, for an interview we did a couple of weeks ago. So, first off, it has been a long year. In addition to publishing our new book, I have moved to a new home and have been working to get a bill passed in Congress. It has been years since we took a break from our normal publishing schedule on the channel, so we're going to be taking a bit of a break. We're going to be working on some new and hopefully interesting content for you. There are some cool new projects in the pipeline, but it may take some time to bring them online, so stay tuned. You might be wondering why we're taking a break now, so let me give you a little peek behind the curtain. Educational channels are generally counter-cyclical to most YouTube channels. What that means is most channels uh, get views that increase over the summer and over the holidays as people are relaxing and away from work or school, while educational videos see the opposite trend, with views dropping particularly over the winter holidays but rising in September and February when many students are returning to schools. This makes January the prime time for me and the channel to take a bit of a break. While you wait, check out some of the older videos we have on the channel. We have close to 1,000 videos across the channel covering all different kinds of topics in philosophy. There are even eight secret bonus videos hidden across the channel. One of those videos can be found in the map of philosophy, one can be found by solving the crossword, and one requires you to combine information from some of the other bonus videos. That last video includes a reward for the pers first person to find it, but has never been found since it was posted five years ago. The reward is still valid, so happy hunting. And I'll leave you with a quick promo for our interview with uh, Greg Sandler and Dan Hayes. Um, we talk about everything from ancient philosophy to our views on other big names in the YouTube philosophy sphere. Uh, we also, of course, chat about the new book, Are All Lives Equal? Please consider buying the book. It really helps um, the channel. And if you want to support the channel in other ways and also hear about some of the new projects we're working on early, consider supporting us on Patreon, but I don't know. I mean, there are some big philosophy channels out there that I, I call it glitz. You know, they spend mm -hmm. a lot of time on the glitz and maybe less time on really good content. Um, and they have lots of, I mean, they, they make us look like mm -hmm. little tiny <laughs> oh. pygmies. Next <laughs> we, we're, we're two bit <laughs> exactly compared to, that. compared to, you know, and I, I won't like, you know, name names or anything. People can find them easily enough. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, so let me ask you this. Uh, mm -hmm. I, we were like so far off script at this <laughs> point, fine. but as somebody who does public philosophy, somebody, I mean, you have a massive range as well. So, you know, you know, your stuff, you know, a lot of other people's stuff. When you look at those channels, um, do you, you know, do you find them interesting or useful? These, these big high production kind of low content Mm -hmm. channels where it's much more about like dramatization or you know making up scenarios or you know that that sort of thing do you find that interesting at all or, or I, do you see that as like ah, eh, it's not really philosophy <laughs> anymore i i see those things in the same way i feel as i read plays by sartre or something i see them as someone okay. who understands the philosophy ideas well enough to produce something that is engaging for a broad audience that maybe connects with those ideas and touches on them and riffs on them. And so I, I, I see them fit into more almost an artistic space than directly a philosophy space. And when, when I see them as that, they, yeah. they're engaging and interesting for me because I, I look at them almost with an aesthetic lens of how are you telling this story or doing these things? And then they become interesting. But if I look at them with kind of that strict just is this clearly dictating philosophy? I, I say, yeah, uh, yeah. They're, they're, I don't know how much there is there. But when I, when I look at them kind of in the frame of this is someone that has a background in philosophy that's giving me an artistic piece that maybe has bits of philosophy in it, then, then I find it, I'm more engaged with it. So, so, they could so be... it all depends upon the talos or the ends which they're actually trying to go for and how well they've actually executed on those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I like the point where you're talking about basically, you know, if you got a whole bunch of economists and you say, okay, optimize this function, yeah. they go, yes, sir, <laughs> go right and do it without actually thinking about why you're doing it in the first place. This mm -hmm. is one of the things that I, I loved about um, when I first got introduced to philosophy in a, a more serious way in college. Like, I was spending all this time in computer science learning how to do these things, mm -hmm. but not any of the arguments for why I should be doing yeah, any of yeah. these things. Yeah. 
For sure. I, I had a friend who was um, originally an economics major at, at, at Penn State, and he kept asking so many foundational questions, you know, the whys and mm-hmm. stuff like that, mm-hmm. that eventually they actually told him, you need to quit asking those questions and go over to the philosophy department because that's the slum yep. where we send people <laughs> <laughs> to screw around with that sort of thing. And he did, and he, he enjoyed it very much, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. But I, I think that's kind of common that – Oh yeah. Um, Economists you know. shy away from questions of from any normative questions, really. If you ask, should we be doing this? Economists say, oh, no, no, I don't touch that. Go talk to the philosophers. They and they and they push that off. And I worry that disciplines have become so siloed that sure, it's great for philosophy because philosophy has the tools to talk about ethics and philosophy has the tools to have that conversation. But yeah, unless we kind of bring those conversations back into conversation with the people that were asking those initial questions of wait a second, why, why do we make this assumption in economics still? Um, if, if we don't bring that those people who have the tools to ask those ethical questions in, it, I think you miss something and you lose something. Thanks for all the subscriptions, views, and support over the years. Stay tuned for some new big projects coming up soon. Watch this video and more here at Carneades.org. Subscribe, support us on Patreon if you can, uh, and we'll see you uh, in a little bit. Stay skeptical, everybody.